control experiments made the controls for oil and no oil in them. And the ones with no oil include beach sediment, beach sediment with nutrients, sterile beach sediment. Oil controls include the dead oil treated, a dead oil, beach sediments and nutrients, top oil, then top oil without nutrients to see the effect of nutrients in the process of biodegradation. Then the test microcosms, as Elia said, was the primary microcosms for top oil with light and aromatics, then light and aromatics itself. During the period of incubation, we checked for CO2 headspace gases on the GC, GC at the SIM GC for MS44, which signifies for CO2 and 432 for headspace gas or oxygen. Then post biodegradation, we did oil extraction using um, open column chromatography, which is slightly tweaked because we used long tip pipettes and, and very short columns. So we could, because the quantity of crude oil, which was like 100 milligrams, was not actually so much. Um, yeah. The results. Um, first, of, first of lag phase of biodegradation was calculated based on the difference in the amount of CO2 in pristine beach sediments from the amount of mineralization from every other treatment. And the lag phase showed that within the first two days of biodegradation, all the comp all the Controls that had crude oil in them actually exceeded the lab phase of biodegradation, exceeded its lab phase within the first two days. Then the presence of nutrients, the presence of nutrients also was favored in the process of biodegradation because in the control sediment without nutrients, we actually had a longer period of lab phase, which actually lasted for eight days before biodegradation was occur. Then in the experiment itself, controls containing beach sediments plus nutrients without oil actually show that the presence of nutrients in excess actually inhibits your biodegradation, which actually um, follow, uh, which actually concludes previous research that um, nutrients itself is actually an important factor when you want to look at biodegradation. Um, the treatments the, the treatments with benzene, cholerine, parasite, oxyline, and a combination of BTEX, which this one actually was done in 30 micromoles, showed that benzene and toluene, be, benzene, toluene actually produced more CO2 in the system, and produced more CO2 in the system compared to where we had just stock oil treatments. While treatments containing paraxylene showed inhibition in the production of CO2. However, we, not, we cannot draw a conclusion from this because, because, um, because CO2 production in itself is a component of pathway metabolism of microorganisms using the monoxygenes and deoxygenes enzymes. And pathway oxygen utilization can also can also be functional of the whole of the whole system. So it is possible that you could have less CO2 production and high level of biodegradation and high CO2 production and high level of biodegradation as you will see at the end of the experiment. And uh, we try to um, create a table to show the level of lag and the rates of biodegradation. And um, in sediments that did not have oil in them, we had levels of biodegradation in the tents, tent, and in processes that had, in sediments, in microcosms that had top oil in them, we had larger levels of biodegradation. And these experiments also showed that top dead oil actually produced more CO2 actually produce 40% more CO2 than in, in treatments that had just top oil. And this did not follow research by Atlas, Atlas and Bata 1972. And, current, and research last year by James Todd actually showed that dead oil as well with this experiment produced more CO2. We tried to relate it to the fact that in during the period of incubation, um, we we did headspace, headspace gas replacement, headspace oxygen replacement. We did headspace oxygen replacement, and on day six of incubation, on day eight of incubation, actually, we ran out of oxygen in the dead oil and top oil microcosms. But however, after headspace replacement, replacement, only dead oil actually continued the process of biodegradation, while top oil somehow, the top oil microcosm somehow stopped. Also favoring the fact that dead oil will actually produce more CO2 in the system compared to top oil is the fact that the top oil experiment during the period of evaporation in the lab pre-incubation showed that it had lost 35% of volatile components 
while dead oil, as, it, as we presume, actually contains those volatile components. And microorganisms preferentially degrade shorter chain molecules or less shorter chain molecules compared to less compact, co complex structure because of the high demand for oxygen in the closed system. And this is, this is um, um, a, a plot showing um, oxygen utilization in, the, in all of the treatments, dead oil, top oil, and parasite. And we had two head space replacement for dead oil and top oil, while treatments of toluene, ozarene, and parasarene had two one one head space replacement respectively. And, okay, I'm gonna have to come to that part. Yes. Then the biodegradation of the light and aromatics, specifically in the cell. This was actually, the aim of this was actually to determine the amount of oxygen and CO2 used in the system so that we can actually differentiate the amount of CO2 produced by a particular compound, which is the particular treatment compound, and see if we can actually take it out of their treatment in top of it. However, that did not work because um, of microbes in the cell, in, the, in, their, in, their, in their nature actually are very, very non-specific in their, in, their, in their activities. Um, the m xylene treatment showed that we had high level of biodegradation compared to o xylene and p xylene And these are actually papers researched by Messer et al. 2000, which says that when two, three, two, three, catechol, two, three dioxin, dioxygen activity will actually favor m ring cleavages over o ring cleavages. However, if you look at the graph containing oxygen utilization, you will notice that there is high rate of oxygen consumption in the system and there is low rate of CO2 production. This actually goes well to explain the fact that CO2, CO2, oxygen utilization in microcosms is not directly proportional to the amount of CO2 you would produce in a system. And post biodegradation, we try to analyze the extent of biodegradation of all our microcosms in comparison first of dead oil and top oil to fresh oil, to fresh oil, fresh Andrews oil, and um, top oil to all the top oil treatments. This actually showed that we lost C8 to C11 of all our components during the period of biodegradation, which actually lasted, during the period of incubation, which lasted for 20 days. And we also noticed that components of the C12 and C up to C34 also in plus during this period of, we also degraded during this period of bio, biodegradation. Similarly, um, dead oil, con dead oil biodegradation containing large amounts of light and components showed high level of biodegradation. And this can, all, this can bring us to join the conclusion towards the fact that, towards the fact that the presence of light and aromatic hydrocarbon at the beginning shows inhibition with, this, with other factors of, for other factors that control biodegradation, such as environmental factors like nutrients, <coughs> pH, um, temperature. But however, once the threshold of lag is crossed, you have high levels of, you, you have these light end components favoring biodegradation processes. Given the fact that component, compounds such as toluene, even the, the fact that compounds such as benzene and toluene show inhibition at the beginning, but their presence in itself um, enhance pathway metabolism, pathway metabolism by microorganisms to continue, degrade, continue their degradation processes. This is confirmed by the C17 to pristine data, where top layer without nutrients, which had an eight-day lag phase, showed less amount of biodegradation, of, less amount of biodegradation compared to toluene and benzene, which had Higher levels of biodegradation. However, oxaline, amongst all the light and aromatics, show that it is resist, it's present in remnant of that is resistant to biodegradation. And we also try to calculate a mass balance to see how much CO2 or biodegradation relates to how much um, NL, <coughs> how much um, oil is left in the system in the microcosm. However, this, there, there was a flaw in this data, in this data set, in the sense that we put in 100, micro, 100 milligrams of oil, and calculations from fresh oil showed that it contained 9.2 milligrams of NLKs, and GCFID analysis of NLKs 
shows that the sum of the remnant oil, for example, using dead oil, and uh, the sum of remnant oil and the amount of CO2 produced did not amount to 9.2 milligrams. 9.2 milligrams. So this could we could relate it to the fact that during the period of biodegradation, we had headspace gas loss that we did not account for. But for compounds that contain benzene, we also notice that it may not amount to 9.2 milligrams. You can only, we can only draw a conclusion from that. Or we can actually suggest the fact that since oxygen utilization of crude oil ends up in subterminal, or it's still in subterminal, subterminal period of subterminal stages of oxygen of microbial <coughs> utilization, then we should, or wish, or in future, in future, we should be able to check check out for um, subterminal products of biodegradation, such as alcohols, aldehydes, and um, alcohols, aldehydes, and um, acids, organic acids. Sorry. In conclusion, the effect of lightened hydrocarbons, lightened aromatic hydrocarbons. Um, Similar to other factors of biodegradation mentioned earlier, it's inhibitory at the beginning, but at the end of, uh, but during the process, once the threshold of inhibition has been passed, you have these processes favoring biodegradation, such as nutrient. And benzene par paracetamol and enzyme show stronger inhibition of CO2 production <coughs> biodegradation, CO2 production compared to um, treatments with soft oil. In future work should involve understanding how microbes behave in the presence of microbes, which actually initially in beach sediments are about 1% behave in, in, in once when there's a crude oil spill, then pathway metabolites involving oxygen, then we did not go too much into BTEX because its treatment involves a combination of all three compounds, which, which were not analyzed in this experiment. <laughs>